Harper chips one in. We'll push away from Nolan Kent into the hands of Norrish. He's under some pressure from Harper. His first trip to the uh, Sky Dome, of course, to making his debut in uh, the uh, Sheffield Steelers' home leg of the Challenge Cup semi-final. Here's Thompson. Shoots from the point, tipped in front, they score! Christo against his former team, a wonderful tip in front. And it was Thompson who got the blaze underway in the goal column last night here. He leads the charge with an assist, and this is a beauty, Stu. Yeah, Danny Christo starts it off, rims it round to Ian McNulty, who then gets it back to Blake Thompson. Christo then glides in front of the net. You'll see it just come onto the screen there. As he's coming across, gets that redirection. That's a fantastic hand-eye coordination from, from Danny Christo to get it into the back of the net. And 1-0 to the Coventry Blaze. Yeah. Ends up with Mitch Cook. Cook will get into the offensive zone for the Blaze. He's got Spellacy heading to the back door. Throws the puck towards the net. Oh, Sheffield Steelers just wiped the net out. Hopefully he's all right. And... We'll have a stoppage and a, and a face-off, I assume, in the uh, Blaze uh, offensive zone in a sec. It looked like a, 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 just a little bit of losing of the edge there, but careers into the into the post and uh, ends up um, um, you know, looking a little bit worse for wear, to be honest. Stop and go from Watling, although Luciani stays with him. Diffley dump that puck in. Tries to send it in deep again. He'll find Phillips. He shoots in a pretty routine save from Nolan Kent. But you can hear the response from the Steelers fans to see their former skipper getting a wrister off from the slot. Yeah, moving the puck around well in the offensive zone to try and create a little bit of an opening there. Finds Jonathan Phillips uh, in a good position, but not really much traffic in front of Nolan Kent. And he gets a good, a good sight of that one and makes a save. Hazeldine's going to shoot one through a crowd, tipped in front, there's a rebound, oh, the puck jumped over the blade of Aiden Spellacy. Them's with the breaks, as Barmas is going to come in the other way, he scores! Them's with the breaks indeed! And the Sheffield Steelers break up ice after the Blaze have a great scoring chance. And Mitchell Barmas slips one past Nolan Ken for his 14th of the year. Let's have a look again, Stu. You look carefully here as that puck's deflected. It's the Blaze player who smacks it across. Uh, Brady Norris trying to clear it and poke check it away. Poke inadvertently, completely out by accident. Poke checks it straight into the path of Mitchell Barmas, who doesn't make any mistake there past Nolan Ken. Steelers win the draw. They've been good in the dots so far tonight, the visitors. Talking on the goal line. Balmas will curl. He's got Valorant in space in the slot if he can find him. The angle wasn't on, so threw it back for Sorcerman. Steelers trying to almost lug that one in short side. But comes to the point. Sorcerman leaves it off for Balmas. Balmas sorcering it down low. They score. Valorant with a tip in the middle of the slot. Real similar to the Blazers' opening goal of the night. The Steelers throw one down from the point. It's tipped in the slot, beating Kent between the legs. And the Steelers have a couple of answer and have their first lead. Yeah, Balmas throws it in there. Valorant's quite some distance away, but completely changes the direction of that shot. Kent is tracking it from left to right in his goal. But the Valorant tip sends it back to the left-hand side of Nolan Kent. He can't do anything about it. And we see it now 2-1 to the Sheffield Steelers. Be chipped in by Finley Ulrich. Says when that puck along the boards as well through Allen. Nice work from him. Pass finds Cormier. Tanzi looks in. Shooting. Short side scores. Pick top shelf block aside. And the Sheffield Steelers have a third. A lovely bit of patience from Tanzi to settle the puck, lock up, pick his spot, and he gets his fifth of the year. And again, Steelers moving it around across the defence there. And Nolan Kent can't see too much of that, but short side on the blocker. It's, it's a nice bit of, a, a, of picking the spot there from Tanzi. Like you say, a bit of patience, waiting for the right moment to, to put it in, and gets the Steelers a 3 1 lead. Christo pokes it through the feet of the man in front of him. Roth ahead of Christo. Christo Roth going to the corner looking for the puck. It comes away for Roth. Roth in front. Chance McNulty came off the toe of his stick. He's still fighting for it in front of Greenfield, but it comes away with the Steelers. Blaze inches away. The Coventry Blaze were led out by Taron Cozen, so it looks like they're going to make a, a net minding change. And Cozen will head between the pipes for the Blaze. 
Roth shoots from a bad angle, kicked away by Greenfield. Coventry have the puck, although a, a blaze forward stacks it behind the nine. They're going to have a chance. And, oh, what a save by Greenfield off Christo. Ian McNaughty stacked it behind the net. He was able to make a pass anyway. The Blaze fed it out to Christo in the slot. And for all the world, it looked like the Blaze were going to have one back, except for the glove of Matthew Greenfield. Wow, what a stop. Keep doing that, you know, that was a really good combination between the three forwards on that line. McNulty, uh, you know, down on, down on all fours, you know, swipes the puck to Roth, who just puts it right on a plate for Christo. You know, offensively, they did everything. There's going to be a chance in front again for the Blaze here, and a... Oh, it's, it's pinballed it around, they have scored through Roth! A bit of madness in front of Greenfield. He made a couple of stops on that sequence, but Kobe Roth able to bury it for the Blaze. He gets goal number 20 on the year. Let's take a look at this one again. It's out and around. Roth has a backhander that's paddled away, but Greenfield down and out on the uh, second look from Kobe Roth. Yeah, there's only so many saves that your netminder can make there. It didn't necessarily help there that Brian Diffley just laid it for Kobe Roth on a plate, trying to clear it off the line and puts it right in front of Roth, who gets it past Greenfield in the end. And 3-2 uh, now the score. The commentary plays come out after the uh, first intermission with a lot of life. We'll just see if they can maintain this as that puck ends up off the pads of Greenfield. It'll settle it down for the D. And they will look to start up off the board. So it comes off the back of the leg of Ulrich. Blaze will be onside as a result. There might be a chance here. Talberg to the back door. Greenfield makes a couple of big saves off Luciani point blank. As the Coventry Blaze really looking to get some energy and tie this hockey game up. They've started this period superbly. Allen up the near side boards. Kirkham pops that in. Neverlinen. Hard clearance attempt kept alive by Norrish as he pinches down. Now the Steelers are going to try and break three on two. Norrish on the back check has prevented that lovely spinorama though. Chance for Phillips on the backhand to the back door. Oh, and Allen skied it. Lovely transitional hockey from the Sheffield Steelers. But Scott Allen, who had the shot on his stick, threw it up into the netting. And uh, oh, that chance just gets diffused from that moment. The Steelers will look towards the net here. Comes off the stick in the lane. Harper turns and fires wide of the target. Harper will have another chance here. Over to Diffley. The Steelers have got some momentum on this shift. Watling fakes the shot. Kind of managed to stay with him. The Steelers will keep hold of it. Hazeldine stands his ground, doesn't get dangled past. Here's Diffley halfway through this hockey game. The Steelers in the offensive zone here. Oh, chance for Nichols. Down low, tries to feed it back door. Good job by the defenseman to cut that pass out. That was uh, Carter Allen. Shot on the one-timer, kicked away by Cozen. He will eat one, and the Blaze need a stoppage as that was the Steelers' best offensive shift of the second period so far. Very good puck movement, but getting some good opportunities. Lovely stick from Carter Allen to block that one because that was going back post there for um, Josh Nichols, I think it was, to, to put it in the back of the net. But nice, uh, nice cutting out there. Good save as well from Cozen, and uh, the Blaze will be thankful of the stoppage there. It's a one by the Steelers, Balmers. To Valor and he's mobbed by Carter Allen, shot on the turn from Balmas. It'll come out for Diffley on the loose puck. He tries to fire one, but Ripley's down on his knees, blocking it. Chance on the one time from Sauceman upstairs into the netting. And we'll have a stoppage. Great sacrifice play there by Nathan Ripley to make that I block. think Nathan Ripley's been playing excellently this evening. He's, he's really worked hard, put in a, a lot of effort when he's got the ice time there. And he, you know, he's been thrown into a, a lot of shifts with a lot of different line combinations as the 10th forward. And uh, has worked hard, and that's a lovely block there. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, he's doing pretty much everything he did last year you know he's just been a, a little bit snake bit in terms of the uh, points column you know, five and eight last year was pretty good for him and uh, his first full year in the in the blaze organization as a shot from the point comes through and they score Sauceman through a crowd gives the Steelers their two goal lead back as well oh, take a look at this one again it's Sauceman involved once more as he's had a key part through all the Steelers goals and there's just a big log jam of players in that low slot area in front of Taron Cozen unsighted and the Sheffield Steelers get that two goal lead back, Steelers are say. Yeah, Kakali Thompson and a Sheffield Steelers forward all right in the way of Taron Cozen. Another Sheffield Steelers uh, player to the side as well. There is very little that Taron Cozen could have done with that because he just didn't see it. Yeah. 
Here's Talberg. Trying to keep it away from Cormier. Tried to turn in Cormier with a good stick check. And now oh, here come the Steelers again. Norris in a 50-50. The Sheffield Steelers have won it. They've got a two and one down low. Allen on the one time. It was off a saucer pass. A swing and a miss. Here's Luciani. At the end of a long shift, Luciani's still going. Tried to backhand it down low, he couldn't. And now the Steelers might have a chance with Watling. Brings it in nicely. Watling couldn't keep it away from Cook. Oh, there's a chance on the empty net. There's a, a collision with Taron Cozen and a Sheffield Steeler. There will be whistled down as, well, that was Mannix to up ice for the Sheffield Steelers. Yeah, Steelers breaking there. Patrick Watling are getting into open space. You see, comes uh, cuts across there. Looks like he's a, a little bit taken out with Mitch Cook there. And, uh, Certainly uh, think there that the Sheffield Steelers might have been looking for the arm being raised, but nothing coming from the officials on that occasion. Dudek. I thought he was going to squeak away with it there for a second, but the Steelers will come up ice. Backhanded in by Usula. Norris comes across. There is the check on Miko Usula. Balmas gets his stick. Free, throws it out in front, oh, there's a loose puck, and Aiden Spellacy diving down to try and take away a chance. Useless going to throw it to the net for an anyway as Cozen makes a save. As the Sheffield Steelers have Marco Valorant in and around the net front, he just couldn't quite convert, and the Comptry Blaze get a big stop through Taron Cozen with a minute and change to go here in the second. Check comes into the corner by Kukali. Laid back off before Cormier will take it at the point. D to D pass. Steelers send that put down to the goal line. It comes off the stick of Scott Allen. 25 seconds left of the Steelers power play. Harper. Looks at the line, throws it weak side. Back to the point, Cormier. Harper to the goal line. Out in front from Nichols and Allen got a snappy one-timer away but got under it. It's into the netting and we have a stoppage. Plays have a few seconds left to kill us. Oh, the Steelers really had got their uh, their stake set out there in the uh, uh, in the uh, offensive zone for, the, for them on the power play. Cook gets around the hip check from Tanzi. Spellacy keeps that puck moving. Blaze from the point. Thompson shoots, there's a rebound. There's an empty net. Spellacy, oh, good save again from Greenfield. The Coventry Blaze had a couple of big chances there. Good net minding from Greenfield. McNulty wins that face off. Chance for Allen again. He shoots. There's a rebound. They score. McNulty. Greenfield made the first save of the loose, but came off the equipment of the Blaze forward. And their top point scorer buries it to get them back within one. And frankly, Stu, I think that Coventry Blaze goal was coming even as far back as the second period. Yeah, just needed to settle for McNulty. Once it had got past Greenfield, McNulty's there behind the netminder, just trying to get onto it. Takes a couple of swipes, but eventually puts it in the back of the net. And uh, that's Ian McNulty's third point of the evening. Sauceman into the offensive zone, immediately puts the brakes on. Ciampini. Watched by Allen. Puck comes round about boards out for Valorand on the other side. Steps into it. Dudek has a chance to poke that behind Sauceman, and he does. Good job so far by this Blaze PK unit. Campini into the offensive zone. One timer from the point, they score. Tanzi is second of the night. A bullet beating Cozen, low block aside. And the Sheffield Steelers have put a big dagger in the comeback hopes of the Coventry Blaze on the man advantage. Yeah, the power play gets to work on its second opportunity. And you see there just Tanzi skating in center ice, winds up, huge one timer, flashes past Taron Cozen into the back of the net. And the Blaze have another two goal lead and deficit to try and climb. Spellacy into the offensive zone. Back for Kobe Roth. Roth on the drop off. Norrish. Christo has a little bit of space to work with. Looks in, fires. Oh, stopped by Greenfield as Christo picked out under the arm, block aside, but Greenfield says no. You could see what Danny Christo was thinking. He saw the little bit of opening there. The angle was right. Just try and get it above the pad, but below the blocker in a place that's difficult for the netminder to stop there. Coming across the body as well, but you can see there Chris, uh, Greenfield very tight to, the, to the, uh, the body there with his blocker. Makes a good save. Spellacy leans into his man. He'll shield the puck away on the perimeter. Tanzi spins away. 
and the Steelers will clear zone, they'll hit the empty net, that'll seal it, and the Sheffield Steelers will win this game by a score of six goals to three. And uh, Sorcerman and uh, Tanzi will both go to the bench. Sorcerman first. I think uh, Colton Sorcerman is is having a, having a night because that is his fifth point of the evening on a on a six goal offense from a defensive player. That's pretty good. His second goal there. Yes, it's, it's three letters. One of them's M, one of them's V, and one of them's P. Yeah. But uh, you know, I got to say. Of course, the Sheffield Steelers win, but a really valiant performance by the Coventry oh, Blaze. I don't feel like that was a 6-3 hockey game necessarily. I didn't feel like it was a 6-3 hockey game. I felt that the Coventry Blaze were in it for the whole 60 minutes, and they were, they pushed the Sheffield Steelers tonight, and they tested them, which, under the circumstances, to push the Sheffield Steelers as far as they did, came very close to tying it up on a, well, you know, pulling a goal back on a couple of occasions, and uh, just wasn't to be this evening. Here with Blaze head coach Danny Stewart after the home loss to the Sheffield Steelers. Uh, Danny, there was uh, there was the effort there from start to finish from this group and just falling short against a good Steelers team. Yeah, no, listen, our, our compete our compete was there tonight. I think it was a lot better than our game on Friday. Um, it's crazy because you you know obviously two top teams in the league um, by by quite some bit, but uh, you know we I think it's going to sound crazy, but I thought there was a lot of positives this weekend. Um, Unfortunately, just in both games, we had a seven, eight minute lull and against those two types of teams, um, they burn you. And in both cases, you know, three goals in those seven, eight minutes. And at the end of it, you know, we, we, we didn't make mistakes. You know, you hear coaches talk about bending a little bit defensively, especially against good teams. They're gonna, you're going to have to absorb some pressure. But we made three or four huge mistakes and, and, and they ended up in the back of our net. It was probably the biggest difference this weekend. And But like I said, you know, I can't fault my guy's effort. I thought our execution was really good as well. Um, you know, perfect example, that PK there, you know, I thought we did a great job up until that goal and just unfortunately just quick play and we just were f three, four feet off that guy and um, ends up in the back of your net. So, um, you know, it's tough. You know, I, I think the guys are feeling it, especially after Friday. I think, you know, the guys felt that that was our doing more so than anything that we let that one slip. So um, we just got to pick ourselves up because we got a huge weekend coming up and, you know, that table just seems to be getting tighter and tighter um, all the way through, maybe other than the, the top two. And, um, you know, we just got to pick ourselves up and, and get the job done this week. One of the big positives for me tonight was how we played for large pots at that second period, particularly towards the beginning. Um, and we were really unlucky when they got that goal in almost against the break in play, which kind of changed the dynamic. Yeah, I thought I thought Greenfield played immense tonight. I thought he was spectacular. That save in the second period might be the save of the year. And, um, you know, but I, again, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from our guys. We It's probably the most we've got inside Sheffield this year. Um, they're a good defensive team. I mean, their their statistics are ridiculous. And, you know, I think we talk about Sheffield being so good this year, but I think the one thing that's different for them this year is they, they work. They work hard. I think they work as hard as anybody, and, you know, got to give them credit for that. But at the same time, we matched that tonight, um, and our execution was there. I just think we made a couple bigger mistakes than they did, and that's the difference. It's, you know, it's the last three or four games, we've, we've played with the lead at times, but have that, we've kind of let that slip away. Is, is there something in that that, you know, maybe we're a little uncomfortable playing ahead? I, I, I just think, I, I, you know what, we don't manage. We don't manage those situations the way we need to. Um, you know, I said it to the guys before, the second one bad thing goes wrong, um, we try to score a way out of that. And what I mean by that is we try to start forcing plays and trying to make a special play somewhere to get ourselves out of it. Um, and through that, you just create more. And, you know, those, those we're, we're making those mistakes and giving up a goal, but those goals are turning into two and sometimes three, and then you make it difficult on yourself. So um, it's just like anything, you know, we've, we've spoken a lot, you know, at length about our success in overtime and shootouts, and I say the same thing on the other end of the spectrum. You know, you find yourself in those situations, you've had success, so your confidence is there. Um, so now all of a sudden, you know, you blow a couple leads and you get back into that position, you know, guys start playing a little bit stressed when a team, you know, gets a chance or they start putting some pressure on you and you try to force things and, and you make big mistakes. And, you know, Friday night, I don't think Cardiff, you know, stormed us to come back in that game. You know, we were in good position. Their second goal was a highly skilled play um, with a little bit of luck. It was a deflection from 10 feet side of the net and went under the bar. Um, but you got to accept that. It's a special play. It happens. Keep going. 
Um, but, you know, we, we made a bad mistake on, on their third and fourth goals, and that's on us. So there's no excuses for that. Quick turnaround uh, Wednesday uh, against the Clan, uh, the first of a couple of back-to-back -back games against them. And you'll be expecting some pushback from them because they've dropped out of the playoff spots uh, with tonight's results. Yeah, no, nobody's going to lay down for you at this time of year. It's... Uh, like I said, the standings are so tight and everyone's f jockeying for position. And, you know, like I said, we, we can't beat ourselves up. You just got to, I think the guys know in there, you know, it's been clear. They know themselves that we need to be better in certain areas. And, and we just got to find that confidence in doing it. And um, it's a big one on Wednesday, so we'll have to be at our best. A couple of injuries, obviously, we, we know about Jack and, uh, and James. Um, what, are the, uh, what are the updates on those two gents? Uh, Jack, I think, will start doing some light stuff this week. Um, so, you know, we, those types of injuries, it's tough to have a timeline on them. Um, Shearer's going to be a while. Um, we're not exactly sure, but he's going to be at least three, four weeks. Um, so, um, but you know, we'll get, we'll get Curran and Clem back, which will be a big boost to the lineup. And, you know, I thought, I thought Rips and Archie did a great job this weekend. Um, you know, I think both of them were close to, you know, 10, 12 minutes tonight and, um, we needed that from them. So, and I think they, you know, they did a good job out there tonight and we're going to need more of that, you know, going forward. So, um, like I said, we, you can't, you can't dwell on this one. You know, we just got to kind of get some rest here and, and, you know, worry about what's, what's, what's coming up. Thank you, sir. Yeah.